I say, continuing on with protein synthesis, the next stage is translation. So if you remember, translation is changing the language. We're moving from nucleotides or messenger RNA, and we're converting it into a polypeptide chain, which is made of amino acids. There's a little bit of terminology that I'm going to use, so we'll start off with some definitions. A codon. A codon is a triplet code on the messenger RNA that codes for an amino acid. Remember, it's universal. If it's UAG, it's always going to code for the same amino acid, no matter what organism we're looking at. And we're also going to have an anticodon. This is a triplet of bases on transfer RNA, which we're going to look at what transfer RNA is, that codes or that is complementary to the codon. Okay, we're going to do a little drawing and I'm going to tell you about transfer RNA here. I need this space, so I'm going to do my definition of transfer RNA. In fact, it's always written with a small t, so I'm going to keep this as a lowercase t as well. Well, it's RNA, so it's made up of RNA nucleotides and it's got an unusual shape. It's often said to have like a clover shape. Don't worry, you're not going to have to draw this, but you're going to might need to recognize them. And attached to it, is an amino acid. And on the end here, I normally draw them out on a stem. We've got three nucleotides in a row, and this is going to form our anticodon. So, whatever the anticodon is, that is directly correlated to what the amino acid is. If this is a particular code, then this must be the same. Um, if, uh, if I can remember any of my amino acids, UA, no, UAG is a star codon. But what the purpose of this is that the, the anticodon and the amino acid are linked. You can't have, it's not random which amino acid this transfer RNA molecule is carrying. If it's got this anticodon, it must have this amino acid. So what do we need to say in terms of notes? Wrong color. Okay, so it's a polynucleotide, and it's RNA, so it's going to have U's and not T's. It's folded uh, by hydrogen bonds, and most importantly, the anticodon is specific to the amino acid that it carries. So it's moving, it's transferring the amino acid from somewhere in the cytoplasm to where we need it to be. So now I'm going to draw the basic structure of what's happening during translation. I'll let it get speeded up, and then afterwards we'll do a few notes and I'll run you through the explanation. Okay, I think I'll stop there and give some explanation of what's happening. There are many better diagrams than this out there, but drawing it by hand is so much more powerful when it comes to remembering it. These transfer RNAs look like they've been drawn by a five-year-old, but my drawing is not my strong suit. Okay, so let's start with the messenger RNA. This has been produced by transcription, and it's come out of the nucleus through the nucleum pore, and is now in the cytoplasm. So this is our messenger RNA. We've obviously got our codons are codons i've drawn them separated these are obviously continuous we've removed all of the introns these should be right next to each other but for diagrammatic purposes i've kind of drawn separate introns uh, sorry separate codons this is a start codon so this is a ribosome this figure of eight shaped thing this is a ribosome and it needs to attach onto the beginning of the messenger RNA so it can start reading its way along. So this is gonna, it's gonna, it bound on here and it's working its way this way. It's gonna basically hold these transfer RNAs in place, two at a time, you don't need to know that it's two at a time, but it's gonna hold the transfer RNAs in place so that the anticodons can match up with the codons. I didn't keep this same as my, my transcription. I should have done, I, I didn't write down the code for it. This is C, this one will be G, 
This is G, so this one will be C. This one is U, so this one will be A. A pairs with U, U pairs with A, and C pairs with G. So these codons and anticodons are always going to be complementary, complementary base pairing, key term. Ribosome binds on at the start codon, reads its way along. So I should have one, two, three. I've got three codons here, and it's already read these ones. This one, these are in the past. So what we should have is three other amino acids in here. And I'm actually gonna, and these are obviously not, they're not floating, they're bonded together. And this bond is the one that's forming right now. This transfer RNA molecule has deposited it doesn't have an amino acid attached to it because it's whatever this anticodon is here, it's complementary to this codon here, which is complementary to this amino acid. So whatever this codon is coding for, this anticodon is complementary, and this amino acid is, is attached or was attached, and now it's in the polypeptide chain. So this one has just been used and is going away. This one is on its way in and this anticodon will be complementary to this codon and then this amino acid will get put on in the next one in the primary sequence of the of the polypeptide chain okay we'll do some more labeling at the end but let's put some notes down on for translation so the ribosome binds onto the messenger rna at a start codon The codon is matched to a complementary anticodon, and that's done by complementary base pairing. The ribosome holds the transfer RNA in place, and then the amino acids are joined together with a peptide bond. So I'm now going to label this and I'll give it one more run through. So this will need to be speeded up as well. Okay, so a quick recap. The ribosome binds on to the messenger RNA at start codon, reads its way along. It matches the codon to an anticodon on the transfer RNA, which comes with an attached amino acid. The amino acid and the anticodon are pairs, yeah? Whilst they're being held together, then this peptide bond forms between the two different amino acids, and we form a polypeptide chain. The used transfer RNA goes back off into the cytoplasm to attach a new amino acid. Obviously, it's gonna be the same amino acid each time. I wanna make sure that's really clear. Attaching that amino acid does take ATP, and there is a reference to that in the, in the specification. That's a new addition this year. I don't know how much they're going to examine that, but attaching a new a, uh, amino acid to the transfer RNA does use some uh, ATP. The ribosome reads its way along, adds one amino acid each time, and when it reaches a stop codon at the end, it detaches, and then the polypeptide chain is formed.